Want to know what to do in Sonoma and Napa? We've got you covered. If you're coming to Northern California wine country, should you head to Sonoma or Napa? In this video, we'll tell you what we think and also give you the lay of the land on wineries, suggest a couple other activities, and sprinkle in a few practical travel tips. Sonoma and Napa have tons of charming towns, but some are kind of snooty and some are super laid back and unpretentious. We didn't visit every town in the area, but here's what we know. In Sonoma, Hillsburg has tons of charm, great restaurants and really nice shops. Plus, there's two great hotel options. I also really like Guernsville. It's probably the least pretentious town, but still has some really good dining options but you'll need to drive at least 10 minutes to start hitting the wineries. It's also a great jumping off point if you want to head to the coast. In Napa, Calistoga is probably the most laid back. It's pretty charming and there are tons of interesting wineries in that area. St. Helena is beautiful too and has lots of great shops and cafes and a really good art gallery. Then there's Yonville, home to the Michelin starred French Laundry. Yacht feels beautiful, but kind of in a Disneyland way. You'll need to watch out for the tourists lining up at overpriced bakeries and ice cream shops. There's a hotel in Yachtville that charges over $1,000 a night and almost $2,000 in high season. It felt like a repurposed 1980s condo with a facelift from a mediocre interior designer. It was one of those hotels with a fantastic and deceptive website that made me want to scream. And lastly, I'd skip the towns of Napa and Santa Rosa altogether. I wonder if there's any wineries around here. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess that you're coming to Sonoma and Napa to try some wine. So a quick primer on how it works. Back in the day, you used to be able to just rock up and start tasting for free. Not anymore. These days you'll need a reservation at the more popular wineries. Some of the less popular wineries still say you need a resi, but we popped into some that weren't worried about reservations. So some bad planning and spur of the moment won't necessarily ruin your trip. A bit of serendipity can be good. But you might be disappointed if you have your heart set on some of the wineries I'm going to talk about in a minute. Anyway, my advice is plan what wineries you want to see and also plan out your route. The area is huge. Then there's the cost. It ain't cheap. The average price for a standard tasting fee has almost doubled in the past few years and is about 60 bucks in Napa and $30 in Sonoma. The lower end wineries typically have a tasting fee starting at 20 bucks. But most places, if you buy a bottle or two, will credit your tasting fee to the cost of the wine. So buy some wine and the tasting is essentially free in many places. The higher end wineries can easily charge $100 or more for a tasting. And that fee won't be refunded even if you buy wine. The high end wineries should probably be booked weeks in advance. And speaking of swanky wineries, as a design enthusiast, I was on a mission to find Napa and Sonoma's most architectural wineries. And I was not disappointed. I figured folks like you, who like good design hotels, would also want to see some well-designed wineries. And this region has some jaw-dropping architecture. So just like our hotels, we did a bunch of research, visited a bunch of wineries, loved some and were super disappointed with others, and put together a greatest hits video of some gorgeous wineries. If you want a break from all that wine tasting, we can recommend a couple hikes. This is not an exhaustive list, just a couple hikes we liked. The first is the Armstrong Redwood State Park, about five minutes outside laid back Durnsville. We also did a nice hike at Lake Sonoma, 10 to 15 minutes outside of Healdsburg. And if you're gonna be in that area, Okay, here's a hot tip. The Dry Creek General Store for gourmet sandwiches. You can eat there or drop into one of the many close-by wineries and enjoy your gourmet Sammy with a glass of wine. 
Why not? And then of course, there's tons of fine dining in Sonoma and Napa. Too many for me to even start to recommend. Though I will say that the more charming and laid back towns like Healdsburg, Kernsville, and Sebastopol all have great options. We didn't enjoy our experiences around Yachtville and St. Helena as much, kind of like the hotels. Those areas tend to be more touristy, so you often pay more for less. But I'm sure there are exceptions to that rule. Our last recommendation on what you might want to do is head out to the coast. It's only 20 minutes from Guernsville to the beginning of the coast drive, but at least an hour from the towns in Napa. The drive is almost as pretty as Big Sur, and now you know where to stay if you head that way. When should you come? The weather here is pretty temperate, not too hot, not too cold. Um, I'm here in January. It's in the 60s during the day, the 40s at night. Uh, it's been sunny all week, so it's been really beautiful. Um, it, the downside is uh, it's not as pretty because you know there's no leaves or grapes on the vines. Uh, but hotels are like half the price and the wineries are much less crowded. Here's a map of the hotels we're recommending, which is also available on our website. The Sonoma County Airport is probably your best bet if you're coming from the West Coast. All the hotels, except for the Timber Cove Lodge, are a 20 to 40 minute drive from that airport. For everybody else, you'll probably be flying into San Francisco, and it's about an hour and 15 to an hour and 30 minutes to most of Sonoma and Napa from there, assuming that traffic isn't crazy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to smash that like button, and it really helps us out if you subscribe. See you guys in the next video.